Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Masks Off. I'm Kim. And I'm Tia. And we're so excited to do another episode with you today. We're going to do a continuation or just a little bit of a deeper dive of the last episode where we were talking about the avoidance mask. Mm. And today we're going to talk a little bit more about that. So let me begin with a quote by Brene Brown. Daring to set our faves. Yes, she is one of my favorites. So she says, daring to set boundaries is about having the courage to love ourselves, even when we risk disappointing others. Like I read that slowly because I want you all to take that in. Read it again. (laughs) I'm going to read it again. Okay. Daring to set boundaries is about having the courage to love ourselves even when we risk disappointing others. And so Tia and I, we were talking about this before we started recording. Now, many of you may or may not know that we have stayed home and raised our kids for the last 19, 21 years. Um, And it's so hard to set boundaries. At least it has been for me. I'll speak from my own personal experience. I so identified with the role of being mom and I was a people pleaser, didn't want to disappoint others. So there's that part of the quote that, and I know I have shared this before in other episodes, especially when Angela was in driving to school, bringing her lunch, bringing her gym yeah. clothes, yeah. you know, not wanting to say no and disappoint. Mm-hmm. Right. And part of that for me is running the risk of having the other be mad at me and yeah. be upset. And there comes that mm-hmm. conflict that we were talking about in the last episode. And avoiding, you avoiding. avoiding that potential disappointment and conflict. Yes. Mm-hmm. So we were talking and we both felt it was important to talk more about this because it can be so easy for moms And we see it often in our work with our clients. You have seen it. I've seen, I've seen it with other friends where, you know, you can completely lose yourself totally in the role of mom, right. And lose your identity. So we wanted to talk about this because it is such an important topic Mm -hmm. and noticing how that avoidance, you know, so we talked a little about that in the mask one, it's avoiding connecting to yourself. Yes. So when we're fully in that role of mom or wife or whatever that looks like for you, you're avoiding connecting to yourself. So when you wake out of that slumber, yep. You know, so I started waking out of that slumber when they were started going to preschool. So I had two hours a day and I'm like, what do I, after, you know, doing that for a few weeks of like, oh, I can go to the grocery store by myself or go to Target by my, you know, after that initial bit of, I have two hours to myself, then all of a sudden I'm like, who am I? Yeah. And it started that catapult of this journey. And I had, I literally did not have any clue what my needs were. Yeah. how to take care of me. What did I, what did I actually like? I mean, all I did was read parenting books and learn more about how to be a good mom. You know, me too. <laughs> I mean, me too. when I think of that, or then, you know, they'd go to bed and their dad and I would sit down and we'd like watch a show, you know? Yeah. So there was no going within, there was no, but it was that nagging of like, who am I? What do I like? What do I want to do with my life? I knew I didn't want to yeah. go back into engineering. That, I, that much I knew. But I knew I wanted to start to figure out because I knew at least I had the foresight enough to go, they're going to move out of, out of the house at some point. And I don't want to wait till then to figure it out. I want to start to figure out who I am. And it's a, it was a long journey and I won't, you know, we've talked about it here and there, but it's I didn't realize how much I was avoiding and so knee deep into pleasing my kids, pleasing others, being the best mom that I thought I could be and worry, worrying about failure. So I would avoid those situations that would make me not be a good mom. Right. 
Yeah, I totally agree. And I'm thinking as you're speaking, I'm thinking, wow, it goes even back further for me, Mm. even before I became a mom. Sure. And that's why we started this whole podcast, because I'm thinking of all the masks and all the roles that I played, even in high school of, you know, good student, athlete. Um, I felt like I was often the friend that gave advice. Mm -hmm. So even then I was like in kind of a caretaking role or a good daughter. Don't forget good daughter. Oh, for sure. For (laughs) sure. Good daughter role. So I really just played roles. Oh, that's what it is. Survival. Right. So going to your question, which is a super important question is really like, who am I? Mm -hmm. What do I like? What do I value? What's important to me? Right. And, and am I in alignment with that or not? Exactly. Exactly. Are you doing those things? Right. And we're not always going to be doing them. No, of course not. We're living a human experience and we'll fall away from them and then we'll come back or they'll change and we'll realize, oh, I thought that was one of my values. And it is, but it's not as important as I thought it was. It's not one of my top three, four values, which is a really great exercise to do. If you just Google values, all yeah. sorts of lists will come up and go through them. And, and the easiest way to do it is at least how I encourage my clients to do it is go through and just check or circle everyone that resonates with you and then go through it again and go through it again yeah. and narrow it down to top three, top five. And you'll notice that some of the values will umbrella under other ones, but you'll yes. You'll start to learn which ones, and that can be your guiding light that you can return to when you're feeling lost. And if there's a value that you have that's on your list and it's not showing up in your life, yes. what do you need to do to bring it into your life? And there's that avoidance. And there's the avoidance. Because yes. it's important to us, but we're not applying it because it might be scary and hard and we might disappoint others and we, it yes. might not fit into the role that we're playing. So when we take the time to do that, right, you start, just mentioned we can disappoint others. And mm-hmm. so I have been, as I'm becoming like more and more on my journey, I'm wanting to step more and more into who I am, right? And more yes. into myself. And so I'm changing my role. I'm taking off my mask. I'm like, okay, not going to people, please not going to save you, not going to rescue. So the people in my life are like, holy crap. In some ways. Yeah. What do you mean? Where are you? Who are you? (laughs) Yeah. What do you mean? You're not going to call up and make that appointment for me. What do you mean? You're not going to go tell so-and-so to move their car. Mm -hmm. You know, what do you mean? (laughs) Aren't you going to do that for me? It's easy for you, mom. You can just do it really quick. And then I don't have to be uncomfortable. Exactly. From the other. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. So it's important then that, um, because then I have to take a look at my feelings. So when I'm disappointing and I get the backlash, that's what will often stop me in my tracks or in the past, because then I Mm -hmm. didn't like that, you know, yucky feeling that we were talking about in the last episode. Right. When I put up a boundary, said no, or, you know, I'm not going to, I didn't please the other person mm-hmm. and they came back at me with backlash. Now they're mm-hmm. upset with me. They're disapproving. They're disappointed. Yep. And I have to watch myself. I have to really be aware. Like this is where mm-hmm. self-awareness is so key. Cause right. I have to, I've just had it happen. Mm-hmm. And I had to watch like my knee jerk reaction is to want to go back and fix it and say, Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. Okay. Right. No, I know. I didn't mean to, or, you know, let, let me help mm-hmm. you feel better and make it about the other right. because I'm a people, I have been right. a people pleaser. I'm a people pleaser in recovery. That's right. <laughs> Recovering people pleaser. Exactly. I want to be careful of my language. <laughs> right. <laughs> and when I, when I just like allow it, I'm doing what the quote says. Mm-hmm. I'm, just, I'm loving myself. Right. I'm loving myself and saying, no, you know, what I feel inside of me, I see it, I feel it, I value that. And I need to honor 
what is feeling like truth for right. me in this moment. Right. Can you hear the blender running? Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. We're in perfect. <laughs> we're in the we're in the as is. My the daughter is. is clearly making a smoothie. <laughs> yeah. Is she making is she making anything good? <laughs> usually they're usually her smoothie is pretty good, but pretty I didn't good. really expect it to start. With <laughs> Um, it's funny. It's fun. But she's making her own breakfast, which she has for many, many times. Yes. So, you know, that's that. Oh. Absolutely. Oh, See fun. that. I can hear again. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, but I think what you were talking about too is with the, that creating the boundary and the backlash we talked about in our boundaries episode, that boundary hangout. Yes. Yes. And so then we have a choice. Do I go back to my old pattern of people pleasing, fixing, taking care of the other when I know the other is capable of doing it themselves. So we're not talking, you know, you're one and a half year old. It's like, no, I'm sorry. You need to go get breakfast yourself. No, I mean, yeah. it's age appropriate, necessary, Absolutely. But, but when just using the mother child relationship, when our child has the ability to do it for themselves, even if it takes longer, even if it creates more mess, yeah. that was my big thing. <clears throat> Yes, me too. Longer and it created more mess and then I would, it would create more work for me. For you. Mm -hmm. But the reality is when we take away from them by doing everything, by being super mom, by playing that role, losing ourselves, we are not allowing the other to step up into their own autonomy, their own ability to trust themselves that I can do this, even if it's not done just so, even if I screw it up. I am capable. So we're taking away, I mean, there's so many things with that. So even though it feels icky and the other person may not like it because it's uncomfortable for them to have to rise. Yes. We would still continue to do it because we were in avoidance of that conflict, avoidance of the disappointment, avoidance of they're going to push back potentially and be like, I don't want to do it or too hard or whatever story is in their mind we're it's a disservice to ourselves and the other and if we can remember that that when we avoid we're not only hurting ourselves we can potentially be hurting the other and their own autonomy their own authenticity for sure their own inner knowing for sure. I think so. Not only by not giving them the opportunity to grow, but they're also witnessing and watching us if we're not either. So there's exactly. just even that learning by just watching, modeling. you know, mm-hmm. mod- the modeling piece, because, exactly. you know, I know that I was always watching the adults in my life as I was growing up. And now I, you know, you always hear people say, I'll never be like my mom or my dad. I'll never be. And then all of a sudden later in they're like, Bam. they're like, holy crap, I'm being just like my dad. I'm being just yep. like my mom. Because it's again, that conditioning that we right. talked about by modeling and watching. Right. So even if I am always in the mindset of making it about the other or my kids, I can think about it in my mind that way. If mm-hmm. I do stand up for myself yeah. or I do set the boundaries, I'm also helping them. Even exactly. though in the moment they may feel uncomfortable and they might not like the discomfort. Yes. And they're really upset with me. In the end, it's going to help them too, because now I'm mm-hmm. also rising up. My discomfort is coming yes. up because I'm worried about disappointing them, but I'm going to show them that I'm going to do it anyway. Exactly. Exactly. And then they're going to be more able to handle it again and again yeah. and again because they've seen you do it and then they had to rise up and they survived i'm gonna mute she's well i was like the blender's starting again because <laughs> so, I, I told myself if she does it again i am gonna hit the mute button so you guys don't have to listen to that noise in the background um yeah. but so then they rise up and they don't hopefully, I mean, we don't get to decide another's journey, but should they choose to have a partner? Should they choose to have children or whatever Mm. role I put in quotes that they're in their, their life, maybe they'll be able to set the boundaries better and say, you know what? I didn't like it when my mom or my parent had me do that, but it also is why I am able to do this now today. 
you know, right. you see that you can tell the kids whose parents did everything in when they're yeah. 19, 20 years old and older. And you can tell the kids whose parents were like, I know you can do it. You don't like it. Yeah. I've been, I've been guilty of that. I've always wanted to put the pillow underneath <laughs> their heads as they're falling down, you know, put that soft pillow underneath. Yeah. So I mean, I've learned and I do it less and less, but yeah, it's hard. It's just, it's a knee jerk reaction mm -hmm. to want to do that. So, and I think there's that we have to be mindful too. Gonna mute. Hang on. <laughs> That's so funny. Normally, they're, yeah, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my life. Um, we have to remember the discernment too. So when we're saying creating these boundaries and everything, it also is that recognition that it's okay. it doesn't mean like your hard nose all the time. Yes. It's knowing when to step in, when to step back, when to just stand beside. Yes. And help them through something and knowing, okay, no, you can do this a hundred percent on your own. So it's that discernment and it's that, avoidance like the quote from the last one do you go into your little safe room yes. and let your kids go into their safe room or do you mm. give them that little gentle nudge or do you walk through the door that safe room together or do you just sometimes give them a shove and say you gotta get out <laughs> yeah you can do this so discerning and that's that alignment piece that you were talking about yes i know because i feel like um we talked about that whole sweeping underneath the rug, right. you know, in the last right. episode. And I didn't want to, when they were a little bit older and I started to recognize what was going on, I didn't want to repeat that particular pattern. Mm -hmm. So I was often the initiator of maybe not right in the moment, but coming back around and doing a do over and like, okay, let's talk about this. Right. Let's talk about what's going on. You know, and now that they're older, my kids are older, I try to do that even more. But there are a lot of people still, I mean, I don't do that with everyone in my life right. because there are people that just either aren't willing or don't have that mm -hmm. willingness, capability to want to do that, to go underneath. So, so, so there's a reality mm -hmm. there. So we should talk yeah. about that, right? Because yes. we don't live in this world of rainbows and unicorns, everything is all, you know, absolutely not. There's life, there's the real right. world. So what do you do then? Yeah. And everyone's on their own path. Some people yeah. are choosing not to go with and choosing not to feel the discomfort. Mm. They want to stay in their little safe zone, even though yeah. it's not good for them. Hell, yeah. And they know it's not good for them. For some people, right. They just don't know how. So I think it's remembering <laughs> We can only control ourselves and we can't control the other. So whether that person is open and willing to the nudge or not, we can only do so much. Mm. And then there's that natural consequence. So, you know, if you can't do it with a family member or you don't feel comfortable doing it with a friend or whatever that looks like, if you're in alignment with that, that's okay and can let it go. Or if you feel I'm going to put it out there, and then I'm going to release it and let my friends sit with it however they choose to. And they may choose a different way or they may feel themselves drowning because they push themselves too far or not at all. I mean, I think yeah. it's recognizing <clears throat> what we can control. And when we think we can influence another, the reality is we may plant a seed, but we can't make the other be someone that they're not ready to be which really right. is returning to themselves, right? Because you're always that yeah. person. It's not um, trying to be someone else. And I think that's an important piece too, coming back to that original part that we were talking about, about losing ourselves. Yes. We're still there. We're not creating yes. a new persona. Right. We're, we're stepping into who we were born to be. You know, I mean, you look at little babies, they're yep. just present. <laughs> And they yep. flow, I'm hungry, and oh, now I'm fed, and I'm not hungry anymore, now I'm this. It's the same thing. They inherently know what they need, and obviously there's complexities as yes. we get older, but if we can remember 
and peel back those layers, we're just returning to ourselves. We're not, we lost who we are. We're not looking to find another. Yes. Do you, I can't recall that quote by Rumi. Do you know that quote about mm, Rumi? About yeah, yeah. The love and it's just removing the barriers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I don't remember the exact quote, but basically to come back to who we truly are is, is not, it's about removing the blocks and the exactly. barriers. And that's really in a nutshell, that is what we are talking about in all of these episodes. Right. In one way or another, we're saying, take off the masks. We're saying in each of the episodes, we talk about how to peel away, peel away, take a layer of the mm-hmm. onion back, back until you come to the core of who you really are. Right. Right. And the core of who we are can ebb and flow. And as we learn new things, but yep. it's that, and that, that essence. Yes. That's the same. And one more tangible way of going back of finding more about the essence could be that value exercise. Yes. Like, okay, because some people might say, well, what in God's name does that mean? My <laughs> essence, what's my essence? What the frick? You know, like you guys are just talking like, ah, you know, <laughs> and I do that. I have a tendency to just yeah. talk like that spiritual talk. And, but one kind of more tangible way is like, all right, what is important to you? Mm-hmm. Like, what are you, what, without looking through the mask or without looking through a lens of what you think is supposed to be important. So like, you know, you might think that a value of yours is kindness to be kind. Mm -hmm. Now everyone would say, of course, but is that really, right? Is that really a core value of yours? Or are you putting that down because you think you're supposed to be putting it down? Right. Or what about honesty? Mm -hmm. Maybe. And then you don't put on your, on your list. Um, that you want like recognition because you think, oh, that would make me look like I'm braggadocious or like too egocentric. Um, egocentric. But maybe truly that is what your inner knowing, your inner self really wants. Right. right. And you're, so you have, when you're doing that kind of introspection, it's about trying to be as honest as you can be with yourself. And then that is coming into alignment with that. That's what we really kind of are talking about when we say your essence and come back to who you are and what's important to you. And I think building on what you said, the pieces of I should be this or I should be that or I shouldn't be that. Notice the shoulds and the shouldn'ts, right? So that's a story. It's a conditioning. And then also remembering that the words on these value sheets, if you choose to look one up, it's your yeah. interpretation. Yes. It doesn't mean it's the dictionary definition. When right. you read that word, and I think another way to help you realize what values truly align with you and are important is, and we talk about this all the time, what, how does it feel in your body? How does it feel? So you may say the word kindness outside three times, out loud three times. Where mm. do you feel it in your body? How does it feel? Does it feel safe? Does it feel like home? Mm, Does it feel expansive? Or do you you hear the word kindness and you think of your mom going, be nice, just be nice, just be nice. Can't you just be nice? Yeah, a (laughs) hundred percent. And it's not going to feel as good to you because you, there may be an underlying negative feeling from your past that that value may not be in alignment. There may be the same spirit of kindness, but maybe it's not that word. Right. Because words do matter. They do. I, I'll tell you, I have an example of one that's always kind of come up is service. Mm. Like, you know, I feel like I've always resisted service because growing up in a Catholic church, I think, oh, sure. or, or, you know, my, my mom always doing for others, doing for others. And she would say, you know, you need to take it, put other people ahead of yourself. And mm-hmm. so I have this huge resistance to service. However, for some people, service can be such a core value and it feels so right for them, so natural for them, right? And if I, so if I were to put service on my list, that would be completely fake and false for me right. because I have such a resistance to it. Great example. Great so example. So that's just, yeah, that's, that's, I, I was thinking that because when I was doing the activity, but when I put down like peace, mm. like that feels home to me. And you can exhale. 
I mean, that's another thing. Yeah. Check into your breath. Like, does it feel like you can just breathe? Oh, with that one, yeah. Like yeah. peace is one that I really value. Mm -hmm. So then the next step is, okay, so what am I doing to have peace in my life? Am I bringing it in? Right. And one of the ways is, so the, I'm gonna, so here we go. Life is happening, right? So one of the ways that I really have peace and I really connect with peace is when I'm in nature. Mm. If I go by water, if I take a walk, I really connect and feel very peaceful. Like that inner peace, that inner harmony. I'm just like, how much do I do it versus right. how busy am I doing stuff for other people? There's, there mm -hmm. it is in a nutshell. Exactly. It comes so back now to I'm, the very beginning of the conversation. Conversation. Losing yep. yourself, not making Losing yourself myself. important, putting other people's needs, that service piece. So there's That's, that faith yes. value for you, even yes. though you are, I mean, just in the work that you do, it's it is a service to the outside world. You are yes. serving and supporting, but that's not what resonates with you. That, right. So noticing the avoidance of bringing more peace into your life. Completely, completely. And so, like you said, how and, can you bring it back in? And, and you have brought up time and again over our conversations of how nature went when you were a child. Yes. So of course that brings you peace because that was where you found peace when you were little. Such, such inner stillness. And, th and that's another good way to do the exercise mm -hmm. is to go back to a time in your life when you felt certain things, when you felt the best or you felt the most connected and right. what were some of those, you know, values. And that's how you, and again, you pointed out values are fluid. So they do change mm -hmm. over time. And then going back to, are you in alignment with them? Right. And so it's so true going back to, so what's the side effect Mm -hmm. or the downside of when I'm not in alignment and I'm not bringing, going back to the example of bringing that inner peace, that stillness. If I don't put myself in nature or whatever brings mm -hmm. me peace, what are the side effects? Well, for yes. me, if I'm not in alignment with what I value and I'm feeling off centered, or I'm not feeling myself and I'm being inauthentic with myself, I'm going to start eating. I'm mm -hmm. going to start avoiding back full yeah. circle. Yeah, I'm totally. going to start watching a lot of freaking TV. I'm going to be, you know, irritable. I'm just not going to feel there's, there's just a disconnect inside of myself. Right. Or I don't feel joy. I don't feel connected, authentic, real. Right. 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 So That's why I've been doing the work. Yeah. So that alignment is living your value. Are you living your value in your thoughts, yeah. your actions, every part of you, body, mind, spirit, right? Yeah. That's the alignment. That's so the alignment is internal, but it's also external. So it's to be truly authentic. Yeah. We have to have our inner world match our outer world. And so our inner values have to match our outer values and in our actions because all yeah. of this journey and this work is not just internal. I mean, that's where it starts and that where yes. is where it has to be yes. if, because you, you can fake it on the outside, but if it's internally not matching, it's not authentic and vice versa. You can be authentic and know who you are on the inside, but you're too scared so you're avoiding to put it in mm. application in the outside on the world outside. and live it. And so that's, you're avoiding your, your true self. And so notice, like after you listen to this episode, just kind of notice, in, yeah. you know, in, until our next one, <laughs> if yes. you want, or even longer, because we'll just continue to build on all these um, yes. things we're talking about. But notice, hey, this is my value. How am I living it on the outside? Am I? So when you notice there's an incongruency, just, yeah. just be curious. Don't blame yourself. Don't shame yourself. Just say, hey, this is an area I need to look at a little bit more. Is the value I thought inside true? 
Or is how yeah. I'm acting on the outside more true? Which is more true for me? Which makes me feel better? Because we can convince ourselves, like you said, the service, we could try to convince ourselves yeah. or kindness that that's an internal value because we're being kind and serving yes. others on the outside. But that was your people pleaser. Right, which was your role. not, that was I'm my role. role. I convinced myself of that. Mm -hmm. So you were not in alignment, internal and external, even though you were conditioned to be of service for others, to be kind to others. So you were, but it didn't match up. This is such an amazing episode. I feel like there's more, you know, I feel like there's more in this and I feel a, I feel a workshop in this too. I feel, I feel a class with this one with values. We could definitely do one. That would be fun. Um, and offer that. So I'm super excited. (laughs) I'm super excited. And not only that, if you think full circle before we started recording today, mm-hmm. my energy, my vibration was very low this mm-hmm. morning. And as we've gone through this and even doing this podcast with you and talking through this, I feel my vibration coming up, you know, and go ahead. No, don't keep going. Cause I just like, I just don't want to, yeah. what I want to say, but no, keep going. Well, I just feel like my vibration is coming up and it's, I even don't know what I was going to say with that, but other than the fact that that is like a really good outcome of doing all this, like it's, oh. it's just uh, a gift, I guess is yeah. what it feels like. It feels like such a gift. So when you're in that lower vibration, like you were when we first got on our call this morning, before we started recording, you weren't, your inner and your outer weren't in alignment. Yes. Yes. Spot on. That's exactly it. And so now as you, as you've been working through this and we've been working through this, because I feel better now than I did this morning as well. We were just talking this week is, and not just us, I've, other people have been feeling this week has been just kind of off kilter for many yes. reasons. Um, it's that remembering, it's remembering mm. who am I on the inside? Are my outsides matching my inside? Which, which is getting more weight and now how can I bring it together to raise my vibration? Cause that's all it is. It sounds yeah. simple. It's not, but it's just matching ourselves. It is. And by, by talking it through and working through this and talking about the things that we're talking about in this podcast, that are so in alignment with who I am. Everything we talk about in the way that we talk about this is so matched up with who I am. Literally, although it sounded a lot different, but when I was like 13, 14 and 15, I was talking like this. This was me to be deep, to be spiritual, to analyze, to go underneath, go underneath. So that is so such a value that I had then that I still have Mm. now. And that's, I'm in alignment. No wonder my vibrations up. It's returning home. Mm. Yeah. That's, that's who I was meant to be when I came into this world (laughs) It was to be in another life. It might be something else, but in this, this is me. It's awesome. Yeah. So, oh my God. Great, great episode today. Thank you everyone for listening and for watching and If you've had any aha moments throughout this episode, please comment, let us know, subscribe, share, like, all that good stuff. We really appreciate it. Very much so. Thanks so much. See you next time. Have a great day. Bye.